Tom here from Learn Systems. It is January 16th of 2023. PFSense Plus release candidate 2301 is available. Well, it wasn't available just today. It's been available for a little while, but I did load it three days ago on my system here at my office slash studio. Now, this is separate than my business office that's still running the current stable version, but I wanted to share my experience in the upgrade process, and I did a few lab machines, which went boringly smooth. I mean, changes in breaking things is more exciting, uh, which I had a little bit more exciting upgrade doing it with my system, which the real difference is I was running Snort and NTOP, uh, I just removed those packages and did the upgrade again and no problems. I say again because I've done a video on boot environments, link down in the description below, and what you do so you can be at the minimal amount of risk here of disruption and problems or you know having to reload a firewall, which is just pain in the butt, but you go and set up a boot environment you run the upgrade process and if it doesn't go well because you've forgot to remove snort or and top png i was hoping i didn't have to but the settings all came back after i reinstalled them but that broke so all i did was roll back to the previous boot environment remove those two packages run that process again worked perfectly fine and here we are making a video now and well this video is being made and uploaded through a 2301 firewall so let's dive into some of the changes and things that are really different or not so different about the 2301. i'll be leaving a link to this down below so you can read through all the feature changes but the big major ones we want to talk about here is first the refactoring from 7.4 to 8.1 php this is, well, important because PHP 7.4 has reached end of life. As of here today, it is no longer supported. Therefore, if there's a security problem found in that old version of PHP, you're not likely to get an update or a patch for it. It's a big maybe because, as I said, it's unsupported. Now, one problem is when you move from PHP versions, there's new ways to do things because code improves and there may be some deprecated functions. And that's a lot of testing to do. So that's a lot of the under the hood changes that occurred with this version. So it's not just the PFSense system itself, but it's also any of the packages that may have dependencies or problems running the older versions of PHP. The next thing is they went from FreeBSD 12 all the way up to FreeBSD 14. Now, there's a lot of good reasons for doing this. You're getting the latest kernel, and you may not know this, but people that work at NetGate are also code contributors, not just to PFSense, but they're also co-contributing to BSD project itself. Those upstream commits are going most likely into the latest kernel. And if you're running a older version of FreeBSD, there is some extra labor involved in bringing that code back into the older kernel. This will kind of relieve them of some of that technical debt and as they push upstream updates and changes to the BSD project and they can pull that back down into PFSense. But you gotta remember PFSense is built as a distribution that is appliance-like as in single task focused on being a firewall and the features that they put in it. So you're not really at risk from running the latest packages because it's not like a full BSD distribution where you're just pulling from any package because there's been maybe some people concerned if you're running the bleeding edge of all this, would that cause any instability? And of course, you have the people who are writing kernel stuff, pulling the kernel in and packaging this to be a extremely stable firewall. So I think it's really cool that they brought this all the way to FreeBSD 14. This allows them to pull data in faster, I believe, and you know, keep the iterations going when there's changes or updates that need to come to this. Now, of note, 2.7 Community Edition is also doing these same things, moving to the 7.48.1 and moving to FreeBSD 14. I'm talking about Plus because that's what I'm using. And I mentioned the boot environment, so I did test this with 2.7. And so there's a lot of parity here in terms of the base operating system being the same. I've talked about this before where PFSense Plus is still essentially built on top of your PFSense Community Edition. So they share a common base, but the PFSense Plus does have some extra things that are listed in a video also down below. So you can see the difference between them, such as the boot environments and a couple extra features that they add on, on top of it. Now, this is my system here at the studio. It is the 23.1 beta. It has been running for four days, four hours, 32 minutes, because that's how long ago I updated it. I figured four days is enough to do some testing to see if I would run into any problems of things that didn't work. Things that are working fine are my privacy VPN right here, my WireGuard VPN to the office, which you can see has moved about 17 gigs of data uh, in receive and transmitted 1.53 gigs. So that's worked perfectly fine. I loaded HA proxy on here just to see if it would load to see if there's any issues because it is a newer version slightly. I didn't set this up yet to do any testing. We use HA proxy at my 
Office, but I haven't really dove into it. I do have some future videos I'm working on, and I'll probably do those here on this system, but it does load and didn't have any errors. The other services I'm running are Snort, and Snort works perfectly fine, didn't have any problems there. And the final one is going to be under Firewall and, of course, PF Blocker NG. No errors, no trouble running this extension here. So the common ones that you see a lot of people running. Also worth noting that I have plenty of different networks in here, lots of different interfaces and firewall rules, and no issues moving things around between any of these. Now, my reason really for making this video is to share with you the changes that are coming in the new version of PFSense, whether that be the 2.7 Community Edition or the 2301, but specifically I am testing the PFSense Plus 2301. Now, I'm curious what your experiences are, why you have or have not upgraded to the latest version. If there's challenges you have, just, well, put them in the comments below, or more importantly, if you can reproduce a specific problem, let the developers know. That's how these problems get fixed, is through proper testing and evaluating and seeing if there's some reproducible bug that occurs that, well, can be squashed so this can get to full release faster. Obviously, I don't know or have a crystal ball that tells me when the full release date is, but as we can see with PFSense, they are getting close because, well, once there's a lot of bugs quashed or there's not many or many bugs left to quash, I should say, it's probably, we can speculate, really close to coming to full release. Now, before it comes to full release, maybe I'll do some testing on my office because I also am using HA Proxy and Acme and a few other things there with Radius Server. And I want to test to make sure all those functions work. And I can also use the boot environments to test even that larger environment like that, which as I said with the video link down below, kind of reduces all of your risk for doing any of this. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you're having problems, NetGate Forums is a great place to discuss that. If you want to discuss topics you've seen on this channel or reach out to me, my forums are a great place to engage or reach out with me or any of the socials that I've mentioned uh, down in the links below. Thank you and take care. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.